so to speak. Like schizophrenic? Yeah, there person. you go. Doppelganger. Yes. Doppelganger? I never heard of that. That's cool. But Doppler, yes. Doppler. Famous, famous research that he did. So he did some research about waves. Waves and how we perceive them as things move back and forth with respect to us. Because waves kind of move, don't they? They do. They move through air. They move through space. And of course, we can move with respect to them, too. So it talks about detecting motion here. Yeah. So it's about detecting motion. Motion, that's how things move. Exactly. So there's different kinds of waves, right? There are. Let's there's start with sound because right. that's the easiest one. We're okay, so do, there's something called a Doppler shift as it relates to sound. And then, of course, we're talking about light in this chapter. So we'll talk about light more we'll importantly. But let's understand it with sound. I think it's probably easier to start with sound. So as the source of a sound is moving, the pitch changes. Yes, indeed. If you're standing by the side of the road okay. and an ambulance passes by with its siren going, yeah. that source of sound, the siren, is moving with respect to you. And okay. you notice as it passes by, the pitch of that siren changes. Why don't we listen to that sound for a second? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. change. You did indeed. So, and that's called the Doppler shift. So, but the sound isn't actually changing though. No, it's how you perceive the sound. So it's the perception of the person standing on the side of the road. Because if I'm the ambulance driver, I don't hear any change. Absolutely in not. You hear the same pitch as you go down the road. Oh. So it has to do with your own personal perspective. Okay, so this is kind of like a picture of what happens. So you've got a car going. So why don't you help us figure this out? Okay, so here you are. That's all right. That's me listening. And here is a car that's coming at you. And because you're standing in the middle of the road, he's going to honk his horn at you. And what you'll hear is the sound waves coming at you will appear to get shorter and shorter in their wavelengths. Now, what does that mean, shorter and shorter in terms of sound? How does it sound? Well, what happens is, remember, if the wavelength gets shorter, the frequency goes up and the pitch goes up. So it starts higher. Yes. Oh, that uh, hurt. Yeah, okay. So, and you've heard this so many times, this is what it is. It's the Doppler shift. So it goes, and it goes as past. it goes past, you'll hear the pitch go back down because the waves from your perspective are spreading out as this car moves away from you. It's called the Doppler shift. So the dude in the car, he doesn't see or hear any different sound. It's Not the guy at on the all. Side of the road. Because he's moving at the same speed as the waves, and so he hears no change. On the other hand, you are hearing differences because the car moves with respect to you. Okay, so this is making sense. So that's, it changes its pitch, its frequency, based upon where you're standing. That's right. And that's true for any kind of wave. Any wave will do the same thing. Well, light's a wave too, isn't it? Exactly. So the question is, does it do a Doppler shift? Yes, indeed so it if does. the source of light is set in motion relative to an observer, its spectral line shifts to a new wavelength. So we learned about the spectral line just a little bit ago. Exactly. In our last podcast. All right. And so here we have, so, uh, so we got a light bulb. Well, so let's say the light bulb is moving. Sure. So what's going on there? So here's a light bulb moving okay. to the right, and we have an observer over here okay. who sees the light bulb moving away. And it makes the line longer. Makes the line longer because the bulb is moving away from him, just like the car was moving away from you. And then the dude on the other side ah, is getting closer to him. Now he sees a light bulb coming towards him, just like the car was coming towards him. And the wavelengths are getting shorter, I so the frequency is going higher. Light's doing the same thing as sound did. Same, same deal. Same deal. Doppler shift, Doppler shift. Except that this object has to be going very fast in order to see this for light. Whereas okay. for sound, 50 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, okay. no problem. So the light has to go on super uber fast. We have to see it 
moves okay. very quickly. So ah. this, it's called something in, in, in the world. It right? is. It's called red shift and blue shift. Exactly. Red. So why do we call it red shift and blue shift? So an observed increase in the wavelength is called red shift. Increase red shift. Okay, so let's we'll see. Increase of wavelength. Increase wavelength. equals uh, is a red shift. Right. And a um, decrease is called a blue, blue shift. shift. Okay, decrease blue shift, increase red shift. So and it, whether or not you can see the waves, it's happening. Okay. It's not just visible. Okay, so it doesn't just apply to visible light. That's right. It's the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So X-rays and X -rays, all X-rays, gamma rays, so infrared. So let's go back to that picture. I see now that those red, those lines are uh, red and blue. There was a reason why they were colored that way. So here is the line stretching out as the object moves away, and the light appears to be shifting towards the red end of the spectrum. Because the red makes the longer wave. Exactly. So that's why they say red. It's so, the longer wavelength. So means shifting towards the red end of the spectrum. So what that means, right, Dr. Boyer? So if I have a, a, a spectrum, and this is the spectrum of, say, hydrogen, and hydrogen has a line right here in, say, the blue right. region or whatever. And then if I were to then have that light moving away, and I looked at it and I lined it up, it might be over here. Notice, I don't know if you see this, but if these line up, it's now over a little uh, bit more to the left, if you will. towards the red end of the spectrum. So that line actually would be a slightly different color. That's right. I've got four primary colors, guys, so I can't really deal with that. But it's now shifted over. It was here, and it's now shifted over here. So that's and called the red shift. That's right. And by how much it shifted, by how much it shifted, you can tell how fast the light source oh, is moving. So you can actually calculate how fast the car is yes, moving or the yes, star, star or the galaxy cool. or whatever it is you're looking at. And so blue shift is kind of like the same thing. It's, it's the same. the other thing. direction. Yeah, that's right. So as the light moves towards you, you get these lines and with closer shorter. spacing on the wavelength. And so the light is shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. So let's draw, let's have a draw. There this we way. go, another spectrum. Here's a spectrum and we've got a line, you know, let's say I've got a red line right here. And then this is, this is when it's not moving, right? Right. And then when it's moving, the line is shifted over just a skosh to the right. right. And that difference between here and here is then determines how, how, fast, we, how fast that is. stuff is traveling. Exactly. And that works for sound and light. That's right. So we can actually like measure the pitch of a car. And you can measure how fast it's moving. And you can wow, just with that just by sound. Just by sound. How cool is that? So it's it's determined, determine an object's velocity. Exactly. Just like exactly how fast is something Boyer moving just said. with respect to us? So if we can calculate it, we should Ah calculate yes, it. that's the next step. We should calculate it. Here's and the equation. There's Doppler's equation right there. Now that's a bunch of weird stuff. But let's let's figure out what each of the F and V. F but it's not really V. What is it? It's new. It's the it's the symbol for frequency. No. No, that's velocity. Yeah. F is frequency. Everybody. Well, that's right there. Everybody. So let's let's be careful. So F right here stands for frequency. We got delta F. And that means delta. change. So that's how much difference it is. That's right. Change in the frequency. And that's this right velocity. here is velocity. Just think of it as a V. Yeah. So here we have velocity. Yeah, physicists are really bad at changing symbols all the time. So, but here, this is the velocity. And we have that kind of down here. Ah, F, yes, we got them. Listen. Change in frequency. F is the frequency of the sound of the light. V is the velocity of the moving object, and V W, so it should be V subscript W, is the speed of the wave. That's right. Light travels at three times ten to the eighth meters per second. Remember, E eight is the calculator method, and sound traveled, by the way, at three hundred forty. Uh, Meters per second. Look at the difference between these two. Very wow, good. huge. Yeah. So yes, in everyday life we can perceive this, but in everyday life we do not see that. Yeah, indeed. So let's take a look and probably do a couple of mathematical examples. Oh, that sounds so like a good So let's idea. do some math. So we've got a train. So this will be a sound, right? A train is approaching 40 meters per second. The whistle's frequency is 500 hertz. What is the frequency heard by the person in the train? Ooh, I bet we can use that formula. So what are our equations? So let's work out our equation. We've got delta F over F is equal to V, v over the velocity of, of the wave. wave. Exactly. Now what do I know? 
I, the train is approaching at 40 meters per second. That's a speed. That sounds like V to me. This is V. All right, so this we know to be check. Right. Um, the frequency is 500 hertz. That's going to be. There's that F there. F right here. So that, that's I know that. And the velocity of the wave I don't have in the equation, but since this is sound, this is this fine. is 341 meters per second. Yes, indeed. So I need to solve for the change. Mm -hmm. Now, it says what is the frequency? So we have to kind of talk through this one. We're going to actually add what delta F is to our frequency. We'll talk about that or subtract. We'll think yeah, about let's it. get delta F first. So solve for delta F. So now the way you do this, folks, is we cross multiply. And I think it's best to play with the letters first before you plug in the numbers. So I can say delta F times VW is equal to FV. And I'm trying to solve for delta F. So mathematically, you algebraic kiddos, I can divide both sides by VW. The VW is canceled on the left, and I can then say delta F is equal to FV over VW. All right, now we're ready. Now numbers. I can plug my numbers in. I'll put it over here. And so what is F? Is my frequency. It's 500 hertz, right? My V is the speed of the train. 40 meters per second. 40 meters per second. And my VW is the speed of the wave, which was 341 meters per second, which is the speed of sound. Well, I can just plug that into my calculator, right? That sounds like the thing to do. So what do I got? 500 times 40 divided by 341. And I messed up. I did wrong. 500 times 40 divided by 341. Enter. There we go. Hey. 59. That's close enough. So this equals 59. And that'll be in the units, the meters per second cancel. That'll be hertz. Yes. Is that the answer, Dr. Martin? No. That's the frequency shift. We're not quite there All yet. Right, so the train is coming at me, is it right? Approaching. That's right. So we have to think about the dollar shift because we're actually going to take the number 500 and we're going to either add or subtract 59 to it. So we have to kind of think this through. Let's see. Now the picture showed us when the object's coming at us, the waves get compressed, frequency goes up. We need to add. So we need to add. Okay, so I can add 500. Oh, uh, I don't need a calculator for that one. 500 plus 59 is uh, 559 hertz. So that's the frequency of the sound that you hear. So if why, in what case would I subtract? If the train was going away from you, the waves spread out, the frequency goes down, then we subtract. Okay, so make sure you guys get that figured out because that's going to make a big difference on, on how you do this, okay? So we have another example. Now this one has to deal with light. Ah. So we had a distant galaxy has reached had a redshift of 30 nanometers, which normally would have a frequency of so many hertz. How fast is the galaxy traveling away from us? Oh boy, we get to find the speed. So Dr. Barr, why don't you figure out how fast this galaxy is? You can be there. Oh, you can play the game. Okay, okay, let's see. Formula first. So that delta F is going to be equal to F times V over the speed of the wave. So we're just starting from where we were last. There's four things in the equation, Dr. Blair. Oh, you got F and V. Yeah, you've just written it a different way. There you mm. go. The Does that make that better? There you go. There we go. F times V divided by the speed of the wave. Okay. Okay. But the question is, is this what we're really looking for here? I think it's asking for how fast it's going. Ah, how fast it's going is going to be this right the here. The V, not the VW. So the v, VW is just the speed of light. That's the that. speed of light, yes. Yeah, so we know this that. is what we're looking for. Now, we can go through and do our algebra again. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and cross multiply. Right. And effectively, this is over 1. Yeah, that's true. So we've got delta F times VW. times VW is equal to 1 yeah. times this is just FV. FV. And then finally, to get V all by itself, we need to divide both sides by the frequency F. F divided by F is 1. 1 times V is 1. And we get V is equal to shift in frequency 
times the speed of the wave, all divided by the frequency of the light. So I bet we can like plug some numbers in. Yeah. So let's let's see what we can do here. The shift in frequency is, well, my equation, we're now looking at the problem, everybody. Ooh. 30 nanometers, right? Ooh. They gave us the shift. But there's a little problem here, and that is... Oh, it's in those nanometers. nanometers. This right here is wavelength. Okay, so what do we need to do? We're going to have to do a conversion. Divide by a billion, right? Uh, we can, but remember, we need to put over here the shift in frequency, which is in hertz. But this is the shift in frequency oh. in wavelength. So we can't use wavelength. We have to use uh, actual frequency. So we have That's to do right. that. Uh, we got to convert. Okay. Ah, oh, so this problem got a little more interesting. So we got to do a separate equation. So, That's right. so let's throw that equation out there. So frequency times wavelength gives you see. the speed of the wave. So this is an equation, guys, that we're sort of adding. We realized we forgot to put this in there. So yep. it's a good equation to know. So once sometimes you need it. So if I need to figure out frequency, I'll take the speed of light and divide by the Wait. wavelength. Okay, so we'll look at it in the math. Okay. So all right, so what are we going to do here? Well, we've got the speed of light. That's 3e8 for our calculator, meters per second. And then we're going to divide by 30. But remember, the n right here is a metric prefix. It's okay. the nano. E negative 9. This is E minus 9. And then it's in meters. All right. So let me uh, do that on the calculator. Yeah. Guys. Let's see what we get here. So I'll take 3 E 8 divided by 30 E negative 9. I get 1 times 10 to the 16. Oh, that's some serious frequency here. So that's 1 E 16 hertz. Now, we got to remember, though, that this is the change in wavelength. So this is going to be the change in frequency. So we got our change. That's yes. We now we got that's it. Terrific. Now we can put it in over here. Do we have the speed of the wave? You bet. We know how fast that is for light. Do we know what the frequency of the light is? Yeah, it's right in the front. Yeah, right there. All right, so we're let's ready. Plug it in. Let's see what we get then. Oh, let's change colors here. <coughs> so delta so F is 1 E 16. 16. And then we're going to multiply that by 3 E 8, okay. speed of light. And then we're going to divide by our frequency 4.3. And now let's put it in E notation, E14. And all we have to do is use our handy dandy. Dr. Boy, you put a 16, I think, down there. Oh, no! Double check your numbers. Yeah. It's easy to make a mistake. Always check. You never know. All right. There so we go. Let's bring the calculator over. So it's just that, it's that easy, guy. 1 E16 times 3 E8 divided by 4.3 E14. Oops, now you're right. Messed up. How do I back up? 14. There you go. So I get one big number. Wow. Your calculator needs to be in scientific mode. So notation. we can do that. Let's do mode, side, <coughs> enter. Oh, I like that much better. So what do we get? Let's just round it to a nice 7E, seven yeah. and so we've got a 9 right there. And by the way, when you get these big numbers on your calculators, guys, mm -hmm. and if you can see, you see how it, right there, it's um, got that E9. We're just rounding that to 6. That's, don't forget to see that E. Sometimes you might write 6.9 and not realize it's times 10 to the 9. That's right. So we've got uh, E. Oh, there it is. Right. And now all we need is units. We're in speed here. So this is actually uh, meters per second. So it's going 7 times 10 to the ninth meters per second. Well, Galaxies travel that fast? They can travel very fast, but not that fast. Oh, okay. So this problem has some issues. We have some issues with these numbers inside here. Remember, folks. There's the speed of light. We need to compare these two. Nothing goes faster than yeah. the speed of yeah. light. <laughs> We're going some kind of warp five here. Yeah. That's pretty neat. All right, so look, we've done the problem correctly, but we uh, have sort of a fictitious problem. So, but anyways, we'll give you problems hopefully that make sense. Yeah, the problems in the book are 
all are going to give you correct numbers. Yeah, so. I mean, it's we've done the math correctly, but yeah, okay. Why, Mr. Sulu? <laughs> well, folks, that ties us up this last this podcast. There's just one more in chapter three, so we'll see you next time.